Hello and welcome to Yojimbo Security Ninja. My name is David and today we're going to be covering behind the scenes a reverse engineering challenge by Hack the Box. Uh, so the first thing I got here is we got the Deirdre uh, up and running and we're going to uh, create a new project. We're not going to share. Uh, of course I've already done this so we're going to keep that there. I'm going to give it a project name. And just give the same name behind the scenes. Go ahead and finish. We're going to import our file, which is our behind the scenes executable. Okay, let us do it. It's work. This is always helpful to look at these things here. Look at the L file, see what's going on. Um, little Indian, x86, uh, GCC, all that other good stuff. Since this is the first time that it thinks it's doing this, it's going to ask if it wants to be analyzed, and we are going to say yes, please analyze our stuff. Some of the first things I do is come in and I'll look at the functions. Since this is most likely a C or any other compiled, um, they almost always start with the main. Uh, assembly starts with this dash start for the most part but I want to look at the actual code. So looking through here, um, you know, we have some variables. We're assigning some values to variables. You know, we're doing some mem sets. Uh, some other stuff going on. However, I got a little stuck here when I first looked at this. Thing that stands out is this invalid instruction exception and this UD2. I wasn't familiar with UD2, so you kind of have an idea of the move and the calls. Um, but I didn't know what UD2 was. So I did what anybody does, and I went through Google and I searched it. So UD2, UD2 generates an invalid op. Code. This instruction is provided for its software testing to explicitly generate invalid opcode. The opcode is for, or the opcode for this instruction is reserved for this purpose. Other than rising the invalid opcode exception, this instruction is the same as the no op instruction. So that was helpful. Um, but now I know what the UD2 is. It is, you know, an invalid code. It is used for software testing, and it is the same as a no-op instruction. I continue to do my search, and as I went through here and looked, I did see that there was an issue in Geardra for the same thing. Interesting. The UD2 x86 instruction is breaking disassembly. I didn't really realize that before, but yes, it is. So all this here never got finished being disassembled. It just kind of stopped. So looking at this issue, you know, kind of see what the original bug is. Uh, when open, which contains a UD2 instruction, the assembler doesn't go further than this instruction. Uh, to reproduce, here's how we did it. You can compare with the real assembly by using um, object dump. I'm not sure how that real assembly is any different from this assembly. Uh, I guess it doesn't stop. But you can see some more UD2 stuff going on. Uh, but so in this response from the developer, or one of the developers is, um, in my honest opinion, this is the correct behavior. You can manually disassemble the bytes after, but that shouldn't change the decompilation. You can edit your own x86 and replace UD2 instructions with the no-op. Uh, you should basically make the decompiler ignore the UD2 instructions. This seems to be what you want. 
Okay. So if UD2 is the same as a no-op and the developer is saying that we can replace this instruction, let's do that. So again, my question was, how do you do that? So in my searches, I found that you can replace instructions with the patch instruction or control shift G. So this process is uh, received a rating of gold during testing. You should rarely encounter an error. It's good to know. So please let us know if you do. So I'm going to change the UDP to a no op. So if you look, that did something, right? That turned what we were doing into more stuff. So we have these other invalid codes, but I can't really see that over here. So what I found is that if you highlight all of this, all the spots have these double question marks, and you just hit D, D for decompile, it will decompile that. Let's go back to our main. And as you see here, we have some more of these invalid instructions. So if I go here, again, if we do patch instruction, do a no op, uh, we can go to this other DB2. We can do the control shift G, do a no op, and as you see, it keeps uh, decompiling it over here. So we have another UV2, Control Shift G, turn it to a no op. Look at that, it's just decompiling this further and further. So let's find all of these invalid instruction exceptions and turn them into no ops. Bunch of them did I miss some? But let's go ahead and grab them while we see them. Our main. Let's see another one. It looks like I've gotten them all. So now we can go through here and look at it. It looks, it's still obfuscated, still kind of hard to read, but we're getting a little better idea of what's going on. So we only have some of these. Uh, variables being set or defined, being set. The stuff going on. So let's see here. Let's run our behind the scenes. So if we run it without any input at all, we get the challenge password, which we see here. So just saying is if 
there are no parameters. We're just going to say count password. It's obviously not our flag. But as I was going through and looking, I could see that it's looking for a parameter. We do test, we get nothing. But we wanted to print this. So doing a parameter, giving it a parameter, we don't get the challenge password. So we're on the right track, right? So let's look for something. So let's see if we can piece together what that is. As you probably already saw, I did that. Um, so it's only UD2. It's only UD2. And that's it. We were able to get our flag. Uh, and again, that is the, the, the flag, it's UD2. It's only UD2. We go through there, find all the UD2s, replace it with the no op, um, and we're able to continue our decompiling. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, thank you for watching.